a new one running all the way down the wall. And don't tell me it's not vibration. I lost another filling last week. <laughs> Did you hear? Have you considered the neighbours? This used to be a quiet road. There's another for sale board up this afternoon. <laughs> Hello, Charles. Uh, I didn't hear you uh, ring the bell. I was just about to press it. Come through. Uh, look, if, if it's about the noise. Oh, good heavens, no, no, no. I just popped round to collect my son and heir. Oh, I didn't realise Paul was here. Yes, he got back from college last night. He's doing wonderfully well, Henry. Is he? First in his year. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, he always worked hard. He won't stop. We can't stop him from working. We've even tried hiding his textbooks, but he always manages to find them. Should get Matthew to help you. We can never find his. <laughs> That's why I suggested he came round here. To relax a bit and... Uh, Play Matthew some of his records. Yeah. You know, when you really listen to that music, it's quite catchy, isn't it? <laughs> Paul, your father's here. Do you work like a train, Charles? Oh, thank you, yes. You know, I, I really appreciate Paul coming round like this. It'll do Matthew a world of good to have some intelligent company for a change. Instead of hanging around with that crowd from the arcade. Well, I thought, why not? Whatever they say about your son, I think we should give him every chance. Well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> what do they say about him? Oh, that he hangs around with the wrong crowd and that vandalism only started when he came here. What vandalism? Haven't you heard? Oh, it happened again last night. Someone switched the house signs round. Shay New became Journey's End. Journey's End became Buena Vista. And Buena Vista became Camelot. I was done roaming. <laughs> Heaven knows what happened to Poldark. It's probably in a hedge somewhere. Well, if you see it, you uh, will let me know, won't you? Yes, I'll, uh, I'll uh, keep my eyes open, Charles. We're all keeping our eyes open, Henry. And we'll get him, whoever it is. I'd just like him to know that. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Hello, Hello Mr. Boys. Willows. Hello, Dad. You had a good day? Yeah, it's not bad. It's been very busy. I thought you looked a bit tired. Yes, and I was hoping to creosote that fence this evening. Don't worry. I did it this morning. What? Oh. And mowed the lawns. Oh, good heavens. So we can have that game of snooker. Ah, providing you give me a black start. <laughs> he had a break of 65 last night, Henry. Oh, I was just lucky. <laughs> oh, no, no, he's a wonderful player, Henry, wonderful. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks for the drink. Pleasure. Matthew. See you, Matt. And uh, don't forget about the game of squash. Right. Squash? Are you going to play squash? I've asked Matthew down to the club. Oh, wonderful. You better watch out. Junior champion last year. <laughs> <laughs> nice lad. He's a creep. <laughs> you mean he's considerate and well-mannered? Yeah. He's a considerate and well-mannered creep. Did you hear him ask his father if he'd had a good day? When did you last ask me that? All right. He had a good day. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> and he noticed his father looked tired. Have you ever noticed when I look tired? You always look tired. You've got a tired face. Yeah. <laughs> and we know the reason, don't we? Paul could be good for you. Be able to play squash together, it's a wonderful opportunity. I'm not playing squash. Why not? It's dangerous. A little ball bouncing off three walls could get killed by a ricochet. That's not the reason. You're frightened you might break into a sweat. You're bone idle. You're only saying that because he creosoted the fence. Don't be happy until it's, hello, Dad, had a good day. You look tired. By the way, I painted the house and rewired the kitchen. I'd be satisfied if you cut the lawns. They look all right to me. Well, of course they look all right. You don't think they grow to that height and stop, do you? You've heard that throbbing sound on a Saturday afternoon. That's me cutting them. 
Well, if you wanted me to cut them, you only had to say... How much? How much? <laughs> Do you think Paul asked for money? All right, if that's how you feel, I'll cut them. Where'd you keep the muller? Where do I...? You don't think I'm letting you near those lawns, do you? Well, that's all right, then. <laughs> I haven't finished yet. There's some... Don't you ever make your bed? Why? I'm only going to get in it again. <laughs> that's not the point. Wait a minute. What's that strange odour? What strange odour? It's a sort of heavy perfume. It smells like a Turkish brothel in here. How do you know? What? Have you been in one? <laughs> you know what I mean. What is it? Joss sticks. Oh, no, no, it's religion. <laughs> I am not having you burning joss sticks in here. I'm going to mark the wallpaper and get this place tidied up. All right, all right. You're all the same on this road. Completely insular. Lost in the mindless pursuit of wealth. Vying for possessions. So smug and complacent, you can't see beyond the garden fence. There are people out there living in oil drums. Well, if you want to live in an oil drum, that's up to you. <laughs> Personally, I find it a bit of a squeeze. <laughs> but in the meantime, don't blame people for wanting something better. But at whose expense? Property is theft. No, no. Removing a house sign with the intention of depriving the legal owner of its enjoyment. That's theft. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Someone switched the house signs round last night. Oh, and Charles Garden Shear Smith thinks it was me. <laughs> he always suspects me. Whenever anything happens on this road, he's round to borrow the Garden Shears. He's the original nosy neighbour. Well, you can't blame him living next door to a delinquent. <laughs> That's right. Condemn me without a trial. Couldn't have been his son, could it? Well, Paul wouldn't do a thing like that. Suppose you wish you had a son like Paul. Every night. <laughs> I don't know what the fuss is about. We haven't got a name. We used to have. I didn't know that. What was it? Sunny Brook. <laughs> it wasn't a brook. It wasn't that sunny either. <laughs> what happened to it? I burnt it when your mother left. <laughs> mm. Sorry, Dad. Well, just get this place cleared up. I'll do it. What's this? Oh, crap. <laughs> I found it in the drive. Looks like a house sign. Who we'll called their house old crap? <laughs> Not even spelt properly. Spelt it with a K. Obviously an illiterate. Oh, crap. Pole dark. <laughs> what are you doing here, Enid? You're not starting a night shift. I had to see you, Mr. Willows. I have a little bombshell for you. Not another one. <laughs> I found this under this cushion. Yes. It's a tie. I can see it's a tie. <laughs> a silk tie. Well, it's not mine. I know it's not yours. It was in this. Yes. A box. I can see it's a box. Its own box. Archers, high quality bespoke tailors, established 1876. I can read. What are you getting at? I haven't always been a cleaning lady. Oh, good. <laughs> I have known better days. You must have. have... No, go on. I know an expensive tie when I see one. This must have cost at least 20 pounds. 20 pounds? Not that there was a receipt. No receipt. Who hid it there in secrecy and haste to avoid detection? You mean Matthew? <laughs> Perhaps you don't think he'd do such a thing. He doesn't wear a tie. It may have been bravado, an act of daring to impress his friends. Daring is afraid to play squash. <laughs> I think we should confront him with it. Well, he only deny it. He denies everything on principle. Well, we can't just ignore it. No, I suppose not. Ask him to come through, ain't it? What are you doing? Putting it on. This requires subtlety. I'm going to watch his reaction. <coughs> softly, softly, catchy monkey. Right. <laughs> Would you like me to stay? No, no, I'll keep you in reserve. <laughs> if the soft approach fails, then I'll hand him over to you. <laughs> If 
it's about that sign, I... <laughs> <laughs> you like the tie? What? No, I noticed you glanced at it. Yeah, it suits you. Yeah, it's pure silk. Expensive. Came in its own box. From Archers. <laughs> Stolen. <laughs> Why? What? Why did you do it? <laughs> I didn't do it! <laughs> Mrs Thompson found it under the cushion. She thinks you took it. Well, I hope you put it right. I hope you told you brought me up to know the difference between right and wrong. That I may not be perfect, but I'm not a thief. I hope you told her that. <laughs> no, I didn't write it. <laughs> you don't think I took it, do you? Well, it's nothing personal, but in view of the evidence. Nothing personal? I'm your son. I know, but I have to remain objective. And the evidence? What evidence? It's because I'm the youngest, isn't it? You suspect everyone under 21. No, I don't. Yes, you do. But you think the Winslow boy took that postal order. <laughs> I think he was lucky to get away with it. You see? You wouldn't have fought for him. You can't wait to shot me, your own son. You'd seen this tie before. How do you know I didn't buy it? Why would you want to buy a silk tie? As a present. Who for? For you. For me? Why? Father's Day. What? Well, that's months away. As a surprise. Because you let me stay here, I wanted to show my appreciation. And where do you get the money from? Well, I had some put by, and I sold some jam jars. <laughs> And some woolens and some old newspapers. Matthew, well, why didn't you say that in the first place? That you'd sold some jam jars and, and some woolens and, and uh, some old newspapers. Old newspapers. <laughs> you so that you could show your appreciation and surprise me for Father's Day. Well, I didn't think you believed me. Well, you're damn right, I don't believe. You. <laughs> it's a good thing they don't amputate for theft in this country. You'd be down to your torso by now. <laughs> you didn't buy this for me, you little toad. You're right. I didn't. I wouldn't buy you a present, you suspicious, miserable old git. What <laughs> did you say? When? What? Someone to see you, Mr. Willows. Have a drink, officer? Not while I'm on duty, sir. Oh, on duty, of course. It's not the car, is it? No, sir. If I could just consult my notes. It's not a bereavement. <laughs> no, sir. It's pilfering. Pilfering? Shall I open the window? It's a little warm in here. Pilfering. <laughs> What uh, sort of pilfering? Shoplifting. Archers in the arcade. Good quality stuff. Shirts and ties, mainly. Uh, excuse me, I think that was the door. <laughs> oh, must be the <laughs> Archers. In the arcade? <laughs> no, I don't think I know it. Mind you, I don't go up much these days. You have a son, sir? A son? Uh, a son, a son. Uh, oh, yes, yes, he uh, lives with his mother. I understood he lived here, sir. Oh, that son. <laughs> well, yes, uh, temporarily. You don't think he... He was observed, one of a crowd, acting suspiciously in the arcade. <laughs> of course, it's only suspicion at the moment. But I do have another reason for being here. Another reason? We feel they may be into something worse, far worse. You uh, haven't noticed anything suspicious, have you, sir? Suspicious? Any signs? <laughs> House signs? <laughs> no. <laughs> any change in his behaviour? You know, any abnormality? You see, we think they may be into drugs. Drugs? Oh, no. 
Uh, perhaps you think that he's too well brought up, hmm? too intelligent, too responsible for drugs, eh? No, I think he's too busy smoking and drinking. <laughs> what signs? Moodiness, lethargy, aggression. That's him, all right. Ah! Been like it since he was eight. <laughs> Besides, he couldn't afford drugs. He never has any money. Well, that's another symptom. Never having any money. That's why they steal. Of course, we don't know where they're getting it from. They could even be growing it. <laughs> what does it look like? Well, I guess to about nine foot tall in the harvest period, with large, spiky leaves. <laughs> They're nettles. <laughs> when it's smoked, it's like burning leaves. Well, I certainly haven't smelled any burning leaves around here. Well, if you're sure, sir, I do have some more parents to see. It's amazing, they're always the last in there. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do come across anything suspicious, sir, you will keep us informed. Oh, yes, of course. I'll see you out. No, I can see myself out. And don't forget, they can be incredibly cunning. Well, so can I, and I'll watch out for burning leaves. Sometimes they hide the smell. Oh. They burn joysticks. <laughs> Where is it? Where do you keep it? You better tell me or I'll shake your teeth loose. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Mr. Willows. Well, I didn't realise you were here. I wonder, do you mind just waiting downstairs while we have a little uh, domestic discussion? Uh, certainly. I think he's had my aftershave again. <laughs> well, then, where are you keeping them? What? The drugs. Drugs? What a day. First it's vandalism, then it's thieving, and now drugs. I've heard of people going down downhill, but this is worse than a crest of rum. I don't know what you're talking about. No, of course you don't know what I'm talking about. You're probably on a trip right now. <laughs> and I always thought you got that blank expression from your mother. <laughs> well, what is it? <laughs> Cannabis? Cocaine? Heroin? No! Perhaps you think it won't affect you. But you can kick the habit whenever you want. Well, let me tell you what that habit's like. It's like playing in wet concrete until one day you want to get out and then you find it set rock hard. Suppose that's what they call heavy drugs. <laughs> this isn't funny. In fact, it's probably the most serious moment of your life. So let's have a little honesty between us for a change. Now, if you want my help and understanding, you've got to look me straight in the eye and say, Dad, I'm on drugs. Dad, I'm on drugs. <laughs> you stupid, <laughs> ignorant, junky holy bees! <coughs> oh. Oh, God, I'm feeling groggy already. Well, what is it? Gore wars. Gowars? Gowars aren't a drug. All tobacco's a drug. Cigarettes kill more people than heroin. Well, why couldn't you have been satisfied with thrombosis and chronic asthma? <laughs> you have to kill your brain as well. At least, while you've got a mind, you've got willpower. And while you've got willpower, you can give these up. But drugs destroy the mind. You mean like drink? What are you talking about drink for? <laughs> That's all right, all right. Yes, I like a drink. Relaxes me. But I can still function. I've got it under control. You didn't have it under control last Saturday night. <laughs> Couldn't get the key in the door. Never mind about last Saturday night. We're talking about now. Been a police car outside the house for the last 20 minutes. It's gonna be all over the neighborhood. I'll be pointing out in the street. There he is, the father of the junkie. No, you won't. <laughs> because I don't take drugs. I'll swear on the Bible. Oh, no, it's blasphemy, is it? <laughs> You're not swearing on the Bible. Why not? You might get struck by lightning and I'm standing too close. <laughs> but it's true. But then all you have to say is, Dad, I don't take drugs. I'll know if you're lying. Dad, I don't take drugs. <laughs> yeah. See? It wasn't difficult, was it? Do you believe me? I believe you. Once I've searched this room... You're not searching my room! I am. No, it's I... degrading! Oh. <laughs> Mr Willows. Yes, Paul? 
Uh, my father's downstairs. He wants to buy the garden shears. <laughs> Matthew! Mister? I've been thinking about that tie and I've made a decision. What is it? I want you to take it back to Archer's and apologise. Explain what happened. Well, what did happen? You seem to know more about it than I do. Just tell them that you stole it for a dare to impress your friends. Don't mention drugs. It's you who keeps mentioning drugs. Well, I just hope they'll understand, that's all. I suppose they don't. Well, that's a risk we'll have to take. I mean, that's a risk I'll have to take. Well, what about me? I'm the one who's going to have to live it down. There's never been a breath of suspicion against this family. Not a stain, not a blot. You're the first tea leaf we've ever had. <laughs> what about Uncle Bert? Never mind about Uncle Bert. <laughs> I don't want any arguing. I just want you to take... It's gone. My God, you've stolen it again. <laughs> I haven't stolen it again. I didn't steal it in the first now, place. Now, come on, where is it? Excuse me. <laughs> I thought I'd like to return the shears, Henry. No hurry, Charles. Yeah. Oh, there was uh, something else I thought you might like to know. What? The sign's been returned. Good. Only it doesn't say pole dark. <laughs> what does it say? I won't repeat it, Matthew. <laughs> but we're obviously looking for someone with a twisted mind. <laughs> and we'll catch him. He won't get away with it. I'd like him to know that. That's a nice tie, Joe. Tie? Oh, yes. It, well, it's pure silk, you see. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a little present from Paul. <laughs> it's a wonderful boy. A wonderful boy. Where did Paul get that tie? He must have taken it. Well, how did he know it was there? Because he put it there in the first place. Oh, so that his father wouldn't find it and spoil the surprise? No, because he nicked it. Nicked it? Oh, I see. No, it's slander, is it? <laughs> Just because he's a decent, clean-living boy who buys his father presents... He didn't buy it. You think he's wonderful, don't you? You think the sun shines out of his... You don't say it! <laughs> Just come here. Have you looked at next door's garden lately? Notice what's growing in the shrubbery? Those tall plants with spiky leaves? <laughs> what? Ever wonder what they are? <laughs> Hello, Charles. It's Henry. I think you're going to need to borrow the garden shears again. <laughs> well, I'll explain when I come over. Oh, and, uh... Don't go out in that tie. 